This is your Barbados Today news update for Wednesday, December 8th. So glad you could join us. Preparations are in full gear for local artisans to start assembling the Chinese-made prefabricated houses that will be the new residences of scores of people displaced by severe weather activity earlier this year. In an update on Tuesday at the site of government's new storage facility at the Six Rose Industrial Estate in St. Philip, where containers with the house parts from China were being offloaded, Minister of Housing, Lands and Maintenance Dr. William Dugid disclosed that a work plan is already in place. So as soon as uh, customs and health and so on uh, do their due diligence, which is after we open the containers and check that they are what they're supposed to be and so on and so forth, as soon as we can get that done, uh, we intend to start uh, the erection of the houses as quickly as we can. We're going to have a training uh, going on for, the, uh, for our local artisans over the next few days. And then once that training is complete and we get access to the materials, we will immediately start con construction and we'll be working night and day. We have lights available and we'll be working night and day, uh, two shifts of eight hours each over a 16 hour day to be able to get as many of these uh, installed as possible. Okay, so definitely before the end of the year. Well, I'm pushing for before the end of the year to get as many done as I can. And that is my goal, but uh, you have to set a goal and then work towards it. And that's what we're doing. Starting next year, people as young as 40 can join the Barbados Association of Retired Persons. The move was approved at its annual general meeting held on Monday night, with an estimated 44,000 Barbadians falling in the 40 to 49 age group. President of BAR, Marilyn Riceborn, is optimistic that this category of people will take advantage of the opportunity to join BAR, increasing membership numbers. Riceborn, who was re-elected for a second term at the AGM, Told Barbados Today, the association was prompted to make the move to help younger people get better acquainted with planning for retirement. The Inter-American Development Bank will give Barbados a two-year break for making payments on its five loans if the island is significantly impacted by a natural disaster. Minister and the Minister of Finance, Ryan Strawn, disclosed in the House of Assembly on Tuesday that after lobbying by the government, the Washington-based institution had agreed to include a natural disaster clause in loan contracts recently approved by cabinet. This is something that we advocated for since, since coming to office and I want to thank the IDB sir for reviewing the, the portfolio of loans that they have with us to be able to include those clauses sir um, retroactively because it allows us that if there is a significant um, a significant natural disaster in Barbados that we could suspend the principal payment, sir, on those five specific loans for two years in the same way that we have done with our domestic and our international um, debt obligations. So Barbados, sir, continues to press with respect to what we have been advocating for with respect to debt. Meanwhile, a visiting IDB team believes the Bridgestone port could be a game changer for the economy. The bank's chief of staff and chief strategy officer, Jessica Bedoya, says they will be working with government to enhance the port's operations. For us, visiting the port was critical to better understand those, those issues and those conflicts that, that for making Barbados more competitive in the sphere of maritime cargo transport and transshipment. It's very important for us to understand and see firsthand what those challenges look like because we have instruments and tools that can really help bring the port not only into a level of modernization that it seeks, but also to put Barbados on the map in terms of in the Eastern Caribbean and beyond in the broader Caribbean region space to be a leader in transshipment and in the movement of goods. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mom, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated, and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living.
To regional news, the Antigua and Barbuda government says it may have to reverse plans to end the current state of emergency on December 23 in light of the Omicron variant. We get the details from ABS Television. The fifth variant of concern, the Omicron variant, is the government's biggest concern as it looks to bringing the state of emergency to an end on the 23rd of December. Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Braun explains, should the next few weeks prove challenging, the state of emergency could be extended again. If the Omicron you know, doesn't prove to be a vicious um, variant, then we are likely to continue with that decision. But um, if within the next couple of weeks it spreads rapidly and it becomes a significant threat, then clearly we have to review and perhaps uh, revise uh, or repeal um, that decision. With or without the presence of the state of emergency, COVID-19 will continue to pose a threat to the country's recovery. In order to mitigate COVID-19's impact, the government is taking steps to protect the citizenry. I just had a discussion with the Indian High Commissioner um, in Ghana to acquire another 60,000 AstraZeneca vaccines. Beyond preventing severe COVID-19 infection through vaccination, the government is also intent on introducing antiviral treatment methods. We are also in the market um, to get some of these um, uh, COVID therapies. Uh, they're pretty expensive, but um, we want to make sure that we have them um, in stock in order to, um, you know, at least have additional tools to fight um, hospitalization and death. On the international front, the Indonesian president has promised to increase evacuation efforts after a devastating volcanic eruption. At least 34 people are confirmed dead, but many more remain missing after Mount Simiru erupted on Saturday. Three days after the eruption, this is what's left of the villages surrounding Mount Sumeru. Crops destroyed, trees felled, houses demolished, and everything covered in grey ash. So far, almost 4,000 people have been evacuated from the area. Indonesian President Joko Widodo visited the site on Tuesday, promising to bolster rescue and recovery efforts, as well as permanently relocate some residents. Tadi saya mendapatkan laporan kurang lebih dua ribuan rumah yang memang harus di relokasi ini segera akan kita putuskan di mana. The volcano has remained active since Saturday, putting residents and rescuers on edge. The search for survivors continues, though, with crews deploying dogs to help in the operation. On Monday, teams dug out the body of a 13-year-old boy. At least a dozen others remain missing. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.